Hello team and welcome to this video where I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know about how to sharpen your axe. Now there are a number of different bevels that you'll find and I'm going to demonstrate how to sharpen each one just quickly um, but I'll be primarily focusing on my current axe here. So if you're wondering what axe this is, this is my beat around axe or what I call my beat around axe and that basically means that I use it to strip bark and to split wood. But apart from that, it doesn't really see any carving. So the edge doesn't have to be perfect, but for this video and this demonstration, I'm gonna make it so. I ground this ax a few weeks ago because I had a number of chips in the edge. I just popped it on the Tormek, sharpened it up, and uh, so it's not dull, there's nothing really wrong with it, but just for this video, I thought I'd use it, and uh, we will take it from there. So the first thing we need to do is have a quick look at the edge and decide what sort of condition the edge is in. As I said, this one's absolutely fine. I've popped it onto the Tormek. I took all those deep kind of chips that I had in the edge out. And we are left with a hollow bevel with then flats popped on top. And that just basically speeds up the sharpening. It doesn't really affect it in use. While we're here, we might as well talk about the three types of bevel that we have on an axe typically, and that is either a flat bevel, a flat over hollow, or a convexed edge. The flat and the flat over hollow are sharpened in the same way. Convex, slightly different. So we know this edge is pretty good. I know it's fairly sharp. I'm just gonna start with my 1200, just like I did with the Sloyd knife, and uh, we'll work our way up 1200, 3,000, 7,000. 7,000 is overkill, but we're gonna do it anyway. It really doesn't matter, it only takes a minute. Uh, but you're more than welcome to stop at 5,000, you'll still get a fantastic edge. So the first thing we need is our float glass and jar wood sharpening system. You've seen this one before. I use it to sharpen all of my tools. And uh, we then need to attach or adhere our first grip, grit of paper. So this is the 1,200 grit. I'm gonna place this down. And what I like to pop on top of that, just like I did with my other sharpening videos, is just a little bit of water. The water just helps reduce the swarth buildup, and it also just helps for the, uh, or helps to reduce the friction. So I sharpen this, well there are a number of ways to sharpen an ax. You can hold the axe in your hand and you can sharpen with a stone like so and you can look at the contact between the stone and the bevel. You can sharpen with the axe onto the table Really, it's just a preference thing, that's all it is. There's no right or wrong way. You may find that because the axe is so heavy, actually trying to control all that weight on that small bevel can be quite difficult. So if you prefer, you can hold the axe in one hand and you can sharpen in a way I'll show you in a second. My preferred method, as always, is to work on a table. I've got the ripstop non-slip mat under here, so it's nice and stable. And what you can do if you want to is pen in your bevel. I'm not gonna pen in my bevel, I've done this a number of times, I'm more than happy with knowing where that bevel is, but what it does is it just shows you where you're removing the steel. So what we'll do, the first thing we want to do is we want to start in the middle of the bevel. We're not gonna start up at an edge, we're gonna start at the, mi the middle because that's where we've got the most amount of bevel contact. Then from here, I'm gonna start resting the ax completely flat, and then I'm gonna slowly rock up until I feel that cutting edge coming into contact, but no more that there is me resting on that bevel. Then from here, I'm gonna draw that ax back in a smooth motion, but I'm not gonna adjust or twist or lift the handle, lower the handle, I'm pulling straight back. Rest down, find that bevel, pull straight back. And then what I'll do, I'll turn it round and I'll have a look and see if I've scratched that bevel. Now I haven't got pen in there, I think it's very unlikely you're gonna be able to see the scratch pattern on here but instead of being shiny, it's just ever so slightly matte. And I'm gonna keep working in that same sort of method there. I'm gonna raise up onto the bevel, but I'm gonna move my way slightly along towards the toe, which is up at the top of the ax. Once I've reached it there, I'm gonna go from the middle to the heel, and then I'll flip it over. Okay, last pass. And what you'll be able to see if you pen this in is you'll just be able to make sure that you've hit that whole edge. Now I'm gonna go from the middle to the heel. The, the middle to the toe, middle to the heel, basically is just because I've got the most amount of bevy, bevel contact, sorry, in the middle of the ax. If I'm starting up at the toe, there's very little there to register. 
The other reason that I'm not going in, or, or the reason why I'm not going in a path from one end to another, is you've got very little control over that bevel, very little sensitivity. With a Sloyd knife that weighs just a couple of hundred grams, if that, very easy to fill that bevel, but on an axe there's so much mass here that it makes it much more difficult. So starting in one place, drawing back is the best way to keep your bevels flat and to have the most amount of control. Rest down, up until I can, listen. That is engaging and disengaging that bevel. And what you can also do, like I'm demonstrating here, is I'm resting my fingers onto the table once I've found that bevel angle. And that just helps me to maintain it, makes it that little bit easier. A lot of this is feel, I'm not looking I can feel when I'm in contact with that cutting edge and when I'm not in contact. So now we've done that, we're gonna make sure that we've raised the burr. I've got a slight burr in here, but there's not a burr up the top. So I'm gonna go a little bit more up the top here, find that bevel and the cutting edge. And as I say, this edge isn't bad. I can start on 1200, especially as I've got that flat over hollow grind. But if you didn't, you might want to go to a coarser edge. Now I can feel that burr all the way along underneath. So all I need to do now is flip over. We're gonna do the other side. Middle, find that bevel. Find that bevel. And I'll now go my normal speed for this. So I've gone down, all the way down to that heel there, middle, and now I'm gonna come up to the toe. But again, I'm doing it in single passes because I've got the most amount of control. Make sure we push that burr all the way back, and we have. We'll do one more on this side. Find that bevel, draw back. Last one up there, and then we'll go from the middle down towards the heel. And this is the best way to keep these bevels flat. As soon as you start trying to do twisting motions or you're trying to do everything in one pass, it's almost impossible to keep it flat. The reason we want flat bevels in carving, ideally, is because it allows us to have not so much bevel contact, but we have very much a either engaged or disengaged bevel. And it also helps to reduce glancing off. If you've got a convex bevel, which is more typical in hatchets, um, you'll find that for carving, they tend to glance off. You can use them, and I'll show you how I sharpen those, but ideally you'd work with a flat bevel. I can actually quite clearly see this burr now. I wouldn't be able to show you. What you'd need to do again for a burr is you want to have the light coming in at 45 degrees, the top bevel with the burr on, you want to have facing upwards, light at 45 degrees, and you should see a glitter along the edge. I think I've just done the wrong side, so it wasn't there, but let's just pull it round again. I'll show you. Make sure we've got it. I can see it very clearly now. So I'd have light coming in at 45 degrees coming down here. I would gently raise that cutting edge up until the bevel is flat, and then I should see a glint of shiny metal at that cutting edge. I can see it, I doubt you're gonna be able to see it on the camera, but uh, that's how you find it. So we've done that now, we've raised the burr. There's no point in going on any more than that. You're just gonna be wasting steel. So you guys know how this system works. I'm gonna peel up this uh, adhesive tape, and then we're gonna move on to our next grit, which is the 3000. So again, very nice and easy. You can wipe that down if you want to each time, but I don't think it's necessary at all. I'm gonna, go, as long as there's nothing on the glass block that's gonna create lumps or bumps. This is, although it's had a few fingerprints on there, it's still absolutely fine just to stick another strip of paper right down on top. And we are ready with the water. And all I'll do here is just pop a drop of water onto the bevel both sides, and what that does is just allow me to wipe off any of that 1200 grit. And now we're gonna move on to the 3000. I'm gonna smudge that water in, same thing again, and I'm gonna go at my normal speed. I might even skip this, because there's no point in me repeating it over and over. So the final grit now is our, pull that off, 
we're going to move on to our 7,000. And this really is how quick and easy it is. There's no, no well, nothing going on behind the scenes here. It's literally me peeling and sticking pan, pan paper, sandpaper, and uh, there's really no mess. And that's what I love so much about this system. I'm going to wipe that edge again, remove any of the previous abrasive that might be on there, and then we'll do the same thing again. What happens if we have a convex bevel? Well, there's a couple of different options. Again, you can work like this, and you'll be doing it in small circles until you hear the sound change. You want to basically start from the shoulder of the bevel and do small circles, so you want to braid that away, and then slowly work to the cutting edge. You might prefer to hold the block in your hand and move it like this, or hold the blade up or the yeah the, the blade the cutting edge upwards and hold the glass block like so and you can work from the shoulder towards the cutting edge and that's going to ensure that we don't make too much of an obtuse useless edge same thing on the other side you could always flip the axe round or you could just change which hand you're holding the abrasive block in doesn't matter it's entirely up to you um, but that's how we'd do a convex bevel we'd do small circles again you'd pen it in small circles round and round and round, slowly towards the cutting edge, same on both sides. And if you're doing it with flat bevels, I tend to prefer to rest it onto the table, have the glass block on the table, and do straight pulls. Don't try and move the ax side to side. So that's all we're gonna do, we're absolutely fine there. And now what we're gonna do is remove that burr. Now, I don't actually think the burr's on there anymore. I'm gonna have a quick look. No, the burr's actually gone. It must have come off on this 7,000 grit. So we're done with that now. Again, we can just peel this up. There's not much point because we're not changing grits, but we're going to peel that up, get that out of the way. That goes straight back into its case. Uh, what we'll do from now is we're going to move on to the next grit. Well, next grit, the strop, the next block. We're looking for the suede strop now. And then what we need to do is apply compound to this block. And Again, I've covered this before. I use Veritas, or my preferred compound is Veritas. It's entirely up to you, really. Um, but if you're using my sharpening system, I recommend it, highly recommend it, because I know it works. I know it's a very good quality compound, and I know it won't affect the strop. So we're going to apply some compound to this surface now. And the same thing applies, or the same action applies. Just a little bit. And we're going to do it in the same way. Now, when you're stropping a convex bevel, you want to ensure that you're not doing circles on the strop. You only do the circles when you're doing it on the abrasive paper. If you do circles on the strop, you're going to damage the strop. So what we want to do, we're working on the flat edge, we're going to, or the flat bevel, same thing, same position, rock up onto that cutting edge, and then we're going to draw back. And we're going to repeat this same fashion. Again, I'll go my normal speed, find that bevel, don't go any further and don't go any less. And if you've got that pen, it'll be nice and clear as to where you're removing the steel and uh, you can then adjust it. And don't expect it to be perfect the first time. There's going to be little mistakes. You're going to have to do a pass and check it every time. That's just to be expected. Back on this side. back down towards the heel again. Again, my fingers here are resting on the table and that allows me to fix everything in place at this side. And I'd actually already removed that burr on the um, 7,000 grit paper. And that tends to happen fairly frequently. It does depend on the steel and the heat treat, but it does tend to come off quite quickly on that 7,000 grit. So uh, I'm not gonna go too crazy with this drop here. And this is exactly how I maintain my axe for long periods of time, simply just stropping, nothing else. And that's all it takes. As long as you finish or you bring this up to a fine edge, 5,000 or 7,000, it maintains on a strop very, very well. And it's important that we keep the axe sharp. If we don't have a sharp axe, we're going to have glancing blows. We're going to have it much more difficult for the edge to cut into the wood and uh, ultimately it's going to be more dangerous and just more unpleasant or, or less pleasant. And we're going to leave it there. So we're going to wipe that down now. 
and here we have tissue. I'm going to wipe that down. Now this is extremely sharp, but what we'll do, we'll just go onto the leather because we've got the leather and uh, the, the leather gives it a really nice bite. A very nice bite, a very nice sharp edge. You don't have to use the leather as I've explained before, but if you've got it, I absolutely recommend that you do use it. It does make a difference. There's a lot of people that think that it doesn't really make much difference, but I can, uh, I can assure you that you will notice it straight away. So we'll just wipe the table up of any mess. Same thing again, nice and quickly. And then we'll do a paper test. You could even do an arm hair test. If an ax can shave your arm, it's far sharp enough. If it can shave paper, it's, or it can cut paper, it's far sharp enough. Onto that bevel. Onto that bevel. We'll just do one more on the other side, and then we'll call it a day. Back down from the middle, towards the heel, and we are done. So, paper test. What we're looking for is that it can shave paper from one edge to another. And if it's very sharp, you'll be able to move it around without any problems whatsoever. So there we have it. Now the last thing we'll do is we're gonna pop a little bit of oil onto here and that's just gonna help reduce the chances of it rusting. A little bit of oil and then we are done. That's all it takes. Of course, what we need to do is pop it back into its sheath. Put the sheath here. And that is how you sharpen and strop your axe. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's helped answer any questions that you've had. And of course, if you do have any more questions, just drop me a uh, question in the comment section. And of course, as always, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the bell to be notified of any new content. And if you have enjoyed these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Until next time, have a fantastic time carving and I'll speak to you very, very soon. We have some bonus footage team. Sorry, I totally forgot to do the arm hair test. So uh, I turned all the lights off, but we're actually back. Of course, we'll do a quick arm hair test because it wouldn't be right to do it without or to finish without. So you can see just how sharp it is. It's easily cutting that hair and it's not leaving me with damaged skin or, or scratched skin. So there we have it team. All right, I wanted to include that just in case anyone wanted to see it. So there we go. I've now got bald arm hair. Anyway, team, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.